When we were classmates at Courtney Middle School in downtown Charleston many years ago, he was preaching the Word of God even in the classroom. And now, Elder Rashawn Wilson is preaching the Word of God throughout the country. In this edition of Quintus Post-Ups, I talk with him one-on-one. -on -one. Well, Rashawn, it's been a while since I've actually seen you. It is, it is, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, how are you? Well, I am great and definitely uh, glad to be back here in my hometown. Yes. Uh, Charleston is definitely a beautiful place and it's always an honor just to be back home. And speaking of that, of being busy there, just tell me about your new book. Well, uh, it's entitled 99 and a Half Things a Woman Needs from Her Man. Sure. Uh, how to uh, both establish and maintain a healthy relationship. I started working on it um, just a few years ago, and it took uh, about three years to complete it simply because I wanted it to be very, uh, very exhaustive as it relates to all of the information that I wanted to place in it. And so I took the time to um, interview uh, several hundred uh, women um, getting their opinion and um, all of what I've gathered, all of the information yeah. uh, I gathered from individuals that were from various uh, walks of life, various ethnic backgrounds, cultural backgrounds, and even geographical backgrounds. And so I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to do great. And I heard about the great reviews on Facebook about it. Absolutely, absolutely. Many individuals have already purchased it and um, they are really enjoying it. And I think the reason why is because most of the self help books Oops. that target uh, women um, kind of uh, target women from the angle or the perspective that they're the only individual in the relationship. Yeah. So we'll read books, women will rather, like uh, how to get a man, how to keep a man, how to get a man to mow the lawn, how to get a man to pave the driveway. <laughs> and uh, no book really targets the woman. This particular book helps women identify what they need so that they are able to effectively articulate and communicate what they need to their men. So it's written to both men and women so that women can know what they need and then men can know exactly what their woman needs as well. And talk to me about when life happens. Well, now that book, I actually published that book in 2009. Yeah. And um, it, it is entitled When Life Happens, Obtaining the Power to Move On. And it was written from a series of events that took place in my personal life. And um, I'm aware that sometimes uh, on this journey that we call life, sure. things can happen, things can take place. And the worst thing that we can do is get to a place where we remain stuck or complacent. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, I had several things that happened before I was uh, before I accepted the call uh, to preach. I already knew that I was called to preach. Um, and after I accepted the call to preach, I had a lot of rocks, a lot of mountains and valleys. Most of the trouble that I faced, my decisions. Um, I had a baby out of wedlock. Um, I was actually arrested and I was incarcerated um, on, a, on a few occasions. And I got to a place in my life where I said, I can either stay stuck um, or when life happens, I can get the power to move on. And so I wrote that book as an inspiration to everybody that has ever had life to happen to them. Yeah. Whether it has been going to work on Monday morning and there's a pink slip on the desk, right. whether it has been waking up on Tuesday morning and their car has been repossessed, whether it has been uh, their house being foreclosed or an eviction notice on their apartment's door, um, whenever life happens, it could be a divorce, rape, or molestation, you can have the power to move on. And that is what that book is about. It too has been doing an amazing, I mean, it has been wonderful. I bet it has wonderful. been. And I'm wondering, when did God call you to write books? Well, actually, um, I, don't, I don't really know if it's a calling that I had to uh, have an experience to be able to identify that now was the time. Sure. But when I wrote my first book, I simply um, sat down and I said, you know what? I'm going to write a book. I don't mm -hmm. think I really believed it would have actually developed into a book, but I just began to write and began to journal and um, just put my thoughts on paper so that other individuals could benefit from, uh, from the progress that I've made from all of the stumbling blocks that I've experienced. Well, let's walk down memory lane to Courtney Middle School. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we were both classmates. Absolutely. And I remember when, you know, you were actually preaching the Word of God then. Right. And then I read, too, that you got you actually got the salvation at the age of 12. Right, right, right. Well, I, of course, I, I grew up in church, um, but there is a difference in being saved and being delivered. Absolutely. And so um, while I received salvation and I accepted Jesus Christ right. as my Lord and personal Savior, Savior, there were still other issues that I had to work oh, through. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, I've always believed that deliverance is a twofold process. It's like a woman that's pregnant with a child. Sure. When she delivers the baby, the baby comes out of her womb, so the baby has been delivered. However, there's still an attachment because there's an umbilical cord. Sure. So once the baby is out of her womb, the doctors now must cut the umbilical cord so that they can sever the attachment because even though the baby is out, 
the baby is still connected to what once had it bound. And so I got saved, which is me coming out of sin, but there were still certain things that I was attached to. So I did accept uh, the Lord as my personal Savior at the age of 12, um, but as I foresee, the life happened, and um, I am just as much human as you and anybody else. Sure. <laughs> and talk to me about, you know, getting called to the ministry at the age of 16. Well, um, the call to the ministry of the preach word was very evident, and I'm certain you and many of our other classmates that uh, were in school with us um, could identify uh, me and several of my other friends yes. as well. Yes, that were, yes. um, you know, called to preach at an early age. Um, it was very different because there were certain things that I could not do that everyone else, you know, was able to do at that age. Um, just just some things. Size, you know. Right, abso <laughs> absolutely. Um, but it has been an amazing journey. Um, it has been an amazing journey because I have been able to remain relevant. Sure. And I've been able to understand um, that what individuals need is not condemnation. Whenever an individual has a struggle or an issue, they're already fully and completely aware of the struggle or the issue that they have. So what they need is not someone bashing them or condemning them because they have a struggle. They need to identify a way out. And so even at the age of 16, I wanted to get people to recognize it doesn't matter where you are in life. Yes. It doesn't matter uh, what side of the tracks you grew up on. It doesn't matter if your mother got pregnant with you because she was raped or molested or maybe uh, any type of unfortunate situation. Sure. I, even at the age of 16, wanted individuals to know that there is a purpose attached to your life. It doesn't, before your mother met your father, there was a purpose. Yes. Before Christopher Columbus bumped into America, <laughs> God had a purpose right, for your life. Did. And even at that age, I wanted individuals to know. And from that particular point, you moved on to travel around the South. Absolutely, absolutely. I started out initially traveling throughout the southeastern region yeah. um, of the United States. Sure. And since then, the Lord has uh, expansively allowed me to travel the country, uh, the breadth and length of the country, um, declaring his word. And I am ever so humbled because I recognize it is absolutely positively nothing that I personally have said or done. It is simply God's grace that allows me to be transparent enough yes. to show the world that I have many I's undone. It. I have many T's uncrossed, That's true. but I know that the Lord can get you through anything. And speaking of the South, your new home now is Charlotte. Absolutely, absolutely. Charlotte, North Carolina. I recently relocated to the Queen City uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, even though I was born and raised in Charleston, sure. South Carolina, yeah. um, I absolutely positively love it there. My initial uh, reason for moving was for a job opportunity. Um, and now I am assisting my senior pastor there um, with the church that he's planted in Charlotte. And I actually preach every Sunday for our 11 a.m. worship service there at the Life Center, uh, our Charlotte campus. And so the Lord has been blessing and doing amazing things, and I'm just a testimony of God's grace. And let's fast forward to 2011 when you actually received your holy orders. Right. Well, what was that um, like? uh, it, it, was, it was an amazingly humbling experience. And um, to be ordained as an elder, of course, um, as you first stated, I accepted the call to preach, um, you know, at 16. But to actually be ordained oh, yeah. and uh, have the authority to not only preach, but to be able to baptize, to be Prophesize. able to marry, to be able to, uh, you know, serve communion, and to just give it everything. Um, it, 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 was an, it was definitely an amazingly humbling experience sure. um, because I don't take those uh, ritualistic sacraments um, for granted right. because, uh, right. you know, those are expressions of our salvation. And um, we don't do those things. We don't receive communion or be baptized to be saved. We do those things because we are saved. And... Um, it was, it was simply a humbling experience. I was very humbled. I can remember my senior pastor laying hands on me. And um, I think that for this gen generation, a lot of individuals, uh, we, want, uh, we want promise, but we don't want process. And so for me, it was a humbling experience because uh, it just reminded me that I was willing to endure the process to reach the promise. And anything that is uh, actually worth waiting on is worth enduring the process. For some reason or another, uh, this generation is so eager to get to the top that we will do whatever it is. Some individuals, they will step on others. Oh, yes. They will magnify other individuals' stumbling blocks, their mishaps or their mess-ups just to get to the top. But when you are willing to endure process, once you get to the top, then you will be able to function with a whole other level of authority because my grandmother always taught me that a man with an experience will always be the man with an argument. I like that. And so you can argue all day, but when you have been through process, when you have been through experience, yes. then there are just some things that I know for myself, not because I read in a book, not because someone told me, but because I've experienced it.
And let me talk to you about Brian, Bishop Brian Moore. Mm -hmm. Would you say that God sent him as a blessing to you? I absolutely believe it. In fact, um, Bishop Brian Moore uh, relocated to Charleston, South Carolina from Mount Vernon, New York um, several years ago, perhaps about 23 years ago now. I am 29 years old and I believe that when he relocated yeah. that God had me on his mind. That's right. And I believe that though I did not know Bishop when he relocated here and Bishop did not know me. Right. Um, in fact, I just met him 13 years ago when I united with the church yeah. and I've been a faithful and steady member since then. But I believe that everything that God does is for a reason. Yes. I do not think that anything that happens happens by happenstance. Right. I think that everything that happens happens for a divine purpose and ultimately it has been divinely orchestrated and strategically designed by the hand of God. And so he has played a very intricate part in my life. Um, I have often at times said that he has not only covered me, um, but he has also challenged me. And a lot of times we want individuals to cover us, yep. but if you are covered without challenge, you become crippled. And so there are a lot of people that are handicapped because the individuals that are there to cover them and to protect them become their crutches. But he has not only been a crutch for me, he has challenged me to do better. And I can honestly admit that I am the father that I am to my kids today, the husband that I am to my wife, and the man of God that I am to the church because he has challenged me to do better. And let's speak of, talk about your wife, that is, Deshauna. Absolutely, absolutely. I am so in love with her. She has been an amazing part of my life. I remember meeting her five years ago I actually met her at the College of Charleston really? um, right here in Charleston South Carolina and she I was hosting there, right? absolutely absolutely yeah. she attended the College of Charleston and I was hosting a college Bible study right there on the campus we were really? hosting the uh, Bible studies at uh, the YWCA yeah, um, absolutely absolutely <laughs> and um, it, it was an amazing experience because I'll never forget the first night that she came into the Bible study and I saw her for the very first time I was absolutely astonished I said you know what that is my wife and I pursued her and needless to say um, five years later we yes. have a whole family yeah. <laughs> and you have three kids from what I read absolutely absolutely I, talk I have, to me about those people I, I have three children my oldest is my daughter her name is Jada Marie she is a beautiful girl and uh, my second child my oldest son his name is Joshua Rashawn okay. and then my third son my baby boy his name is Caleb David all okay. three of them uh, they are gifts from God yes, and I yeah. am so 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 appreciative for the Lord um, for trusting uh, them to me I understand that God really doesn't look for us to be owners as much as he looks for us to be stewards That's right. ultimately whatever we have in life does not belong to us the car that we drive the house that we live in all the job that we work things. on absolutely all materialistic things those may be resources but ultimately God is the source and so God gives us things, they still belong to him, yes. but he only gives those things to us so that we can be stewards over what he provides. And so my children, likewise, along with my wife and everything else that the Lord has allowed me to obtain yes. and attain while here in the earth, I know that they all belong to God. So my children, they belong to God, but the Lord has, has entrusted me to be stewards over them, and I absolutely love them to life. I'm sure you do. I do. And let's fill in the blanks for me. Preaching the word of God is... Uh, amazing. <laughs> yes. Uh, preaching, uh, actually, God is. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> Rashawn Wilson is. Uh, humble. Yes, yes, yes. You know, um, you have been preaching for some time now, and as a prophet, you probably know what's going to happen next. But when you look into your crystal ball, I know we don't do that here because <laughs> we are Christians, but what do you see in your future? Well, um, uh, there is a scripture, and uh, the Bible says, um, through one of the prophets, God speaks, and he says that I know the thoughts that I have toward you. Um, they are thoughts of peace and not of evil, but to give you an expected end. And, um, Jeremiah so, 29, 11. That's exactly what it is. And um, so from that, I recognize that if I see my future through the lens of God, right. then I will see success, I will see prosperity, I will see wealth, not just riches. But I will see wealth. And the reason why there's a difference in wealth and riches is because there are some things that money can't buy. Um, while money can buy certain things, uh, what we should strive for is wealth. Because to strive for riches says that you will have money. But while money can buy you medicine, it can't buy you health. Money can buy you a house, but money can't buy you a home. Money can buy you, uh, some people say money can't buy love. Well, you know, it'll buy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> 
uh, you know, money can probably buy you love, but it won't yeah. buy you true love. Right, that's true. And so um, that's what I see in my future. Um, I have said prophetically, as I've been prophesying uh, at various churches, that this year, I believe, can be the year of secular success. Because so many Christians, especially those of us that are young and are part of this generation, sure. we sometimes unintentionally lock our success into church. And we feel like we can be a successful deacon or a successful trustee or a successful pastor. But that is not the will of God at its, at its expanded view. Sure. God desires for you to not only be successful in the kingdom, but to be successful in the secular world. So whereas we have influence in the judicial system and sure. in the political arenas right. and the state that our country is in um, through the economic eye, through the political eye, it is going to take those of us that can look into our future through the lens of God and see that if the kingdoms of this world are going to become the kingdoms of our Lord and it's Christ, it is only when we stand up and when we actually make a difference so that we can let our light so shine so that the, all the world may be able to see our good works and glorify the Father that's in heaven. That is so true, and I say amen to that. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Well, with Sean Wilson, it was so great talking to you. And, and, and it you. was definitely, that. thank you so, so, so much, Quentin, for having me here on your show. I am certainly honored, and of course, you know, we've been friends for a long time. Right. But uh, I just want to say, certainly, if anyone would like to purchase the book, you can um, go to www.rashawnwilson.com. That's R-A-S-H-A-N, no W's, uh, <laughs> uh, no U's. And I actually have the book here, and yeah, so sure. uh, we're, we're inviting everybody to go, go ahead, go to the website. Website, visit my online bookstore, pick up the book, and I promise you, it will do you some good. He's Thanks good again, Quinn, and well, I thank you. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to, yeah, thank you. Absolutely. I appreciate absolutely. that. No problem at thank all. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much.